Hey everybody, welcome to the Methods of Reproduction podcast. We're going to be talking about sexual and asexual reproduction. Asexual reproduction requires only one parent and the offspring are an exact copy of the parent. Yes, that is right. There are certain animals that can clone themselves through the method of asexual reproduction. Organisms that reproduce asexually cannot develop much variety, meaning genetic variety, because they are copying the original organism exactly. So the traits that belong to the parent organism will belong to the offspring. There are four methods of asexual reproduction. They are binary fission, budding, fragmentation, and parthenogenesis. Binary fission occurs uh, in single-celled organisms like amoeba, paramecium, uh, which, uh, so they use asexual, asexual reproduction uh, by just dividing into two equal halves. Uh, this is called binary fission. Within cells, this process is called mitosis. But because this is not just like a normal cell, it's an actual organism, we're going to go ahead and call it binary fission, fission so we don't get confused between the two. When conditions are good, so you know there are, there's a lot of food, there's a lot of water, the temperature is right, the mood is right, uh, binary fission is very effective uh, for producing many, many offspring. So for paramecium, which is a type of uh, cell, it's a bacteria, it can divide, grow, and divide again in the space of eight hours. Meaning in eight hours, I will. Ha- so I, I could start with one paramecium, and I could divide, and then grow, and then divide again. So that means if I have one, I'll divide and grow, so that I'll have two, and then those two will will divide and grow, so I'll have four. In eight hours, I'll have four paramecium. You know, compare that to nine months with with every human. So it, it's a uh, it's a really really effective way of producing many many offspring. Budding, uh, an offspring grows out of the body of the parent. So here we could see a uh, hydra is a very simple organism, and there's like a mini hydra coming out of this, and it's budding. Same with cacti or cactus. You know, cacti is the plural of cactus. Cacti buds. So these are little buds right there of cacti a plant producing reproducing asexually very cool stuff Uh, yeast also does this yeast is the bacteria that allows bread to rise Uh, the cell does not divide equally in two halves instead there is a large mother cell and a smaller daughter cell so just so, so that you don't get confused between budding and binary fission binary fission two equal halves okay budding It's a parent and a small little offspring coming from it, or coming out of it. Fragmentation, this one's very cool. Uh, In this form, the body of the parent breaks into distinct pieces, each of which can produce an offspring. So coral can break off, and the piece that breaks off can form a whole new colony. And starfish can grow from one detached arm. So we see here that this starfish uh, looks like, you know, these, these three arms were cut off. So the organism just had this one or these two legs left and we have three little arms coming out from it so you could take one starfish that's five pieces tear off you know each piece and then you could have five different starfish growing from it now i don't recommend the next time you see a starfish to go and rip off its legs i'm sure it's very painful and inhumane but in case part of it gets eaten you know by an animal it has adapted um, to allow itself to grow like that it's very cool Fragmentation also occurs with plants, so there are certain plants uh, where you could just cut them and put them in a, in a glass like this and then end up putting them in soil and a whole new plant will grow from it. Uh, one of the plants that I did research on is a plant called Japanese knotweed and that plant is very difficult to kill. You could t- take almost any section of that plant, throw it in the soil and a whole new plant will grow from it. It's very, very amazing. Uh, green plants are very sophisticated in their methods of asexual reproduction. Offspring may be produced by runners, bulbs, rhizomes, or tubers. Those are the different types of, uh, you know, stems that um, that occur. So, depending on what type of stem you have uh, as uh, um, a green plant, you could have a different type of asexual reproduction. Parthenogenesis. Now, this one's very interesting. It's a form of asexual reproduction in which females produce eggs that develop without fertilization. So, parthenogenesis is seen to occur naturally in some invertebrates, which means uh, animals that lack backbone, along with several fish, amphibians, and reptiles, as well as in many plants. And no one knows why. 
uh, or there are no known cases of parthenogens in mammals. But so it's it's very um, so it's everything that not everything, but this doesn't happen with mammals, but it'll happen with invertebrates, amphibians, and reptiles. So it'll just be so that's like a female Komodo dragon right there, or actually it looks like an Asian water monitor to me, and that will just produce eggs without any you know male um, I guess you know genes. Okay, and those eggs will produce on their own. So it's not just limited to very small organisms or very small creatures. Even creatures as large as this reptile can reproduce asexually. Now, sexual reproduction. It requires two parents, a male and a female, or in um, you know cell cellular terms, uh, an egg and a sperm. When the egg and sperm join, something called a zygote is formed. And that's what uh, the new organism starts out as. So when you and I you know, where we're conceived, okay, and we were still, you know, before we were even embryos, would, the, at the first stages of our lives, we were just um, an egg cell and a sperm cell fused together in the form of a zygote. And we just kind of attached to the uterine wall, and we grew into, you know, little babies. And then, you know, we were given birth to, and now here we are. Uh, offspring are different from the parent and the organism because of that genetic variance that we were speaking about earlier. So we're combining uh, different genetic uh, material. Uh, the process is called meiosis. Meiosis is the process in which um, sperm and egg cells are made. So our normal cells use this um, process called mitosis, but meiosis is the process used in, in the gametes, right, or the, uh, the reproductive organs. 23, 23, 46, that's the number of chromosomes we have. Chromosomes, as we've learned, store the genetic material in, in every cell. So sperm, a sperm has 23 chromosomes, an egg has 23 chromosomes, and the fertilized egg has 46 chromosomes. All cells in our body, called soma cells, that means every cell, excluding our reproductive cells, have 46 chromosomes. The reason why the reproductive cells have 23 only is because they fuse together to form 46, which is the new organism. So the way this would work, uh, we have the capital B, we have the lower, this is like just very introductory, very basic genetics, so don't worry about understanding this too much. But So we have um, the brown eye gene, so that means the baby will have brown eyes, uh, and it's going to have dark hair, because we have a capital D. Uh, we got the not so smart gene and the smart gene, so we have the S right here, so it's going to be smart. And they have the big T and the big T, so it's going to be a tongue roller. So you're going to have a brown eyed, dark hair, smart, tongue rolling baby. All right, very cool stuff. Methods of sexual reproduction pollination, external fertilization, and internal fertilization. External fertilization. Uh, usually requires a medium such as water, so typically happens in water, uh, which the sperms can use to swim towards the egg cell. External fertilization usually occurs in fish and amphibians. The females lay the egg in the water and the males score sperm in the same area. The egg and the sperm get together and mix up and form zygote. So here's a, here's a picture of external fertilization in action right there. Internal fertilization, this is what humans do, all right? Fertilization occurs within the female. Internal fertilization occurs in mammals, insects, birds, reptiles. So mammals like gorillas, lions, elephants, rats, zebras, and dolphins have live births. Um, insects, birds, and most reptiles lay eggs. So here we have looks like an ostrich laying its ostrich eggs. Here, you know, a lion and a lioness. They mate, and uh, the lioness gives birth.